Welcome to School Report, a glimpse into the classrooms of St. Lucie County Public Schools. School Report provides the opportunity to share with the community academic and extracurricular activities of students in our schools. And now, here is School Report. We are a proud ninth grade class. We know what's right. We know better, so we do better. I expect you to be fully involved and fully respectful. You know how we do it. Now to the stage, let me present to you Dr. Mills, our local super school board member, excuse me, and the chairman of the school board. Give her your give her a round of applause this morning. Come on up. traveled the journey. How many of you ever heard of the Kids at Hope um, journey path of, of future journey? We've already traveled that journey. And so I am recruiting people from all over the community. I did it last year. And I've come back this year to do the same thing for the ninth grade academy. And this is a real privilege for Westwood to have. We don't have it, this program at any other school in this county. Westwood is the beginning school that we are doing this, for having speakers come in like we're doing every month. You will hear someone else and we will have a variety of people come in and they're gonna share their story with you. They are just gonna talk to you about how it was for them as they were growing up so that you, that you can see the challenges that different ones had to meet in order to become uh, and had to overcome in order to become very successful in life. Well, today, I will speak a little bit later on about my life, but we have for our first speaker, a, for our very first speaker for this year, for the Ninth Grade Academy, we have your superintendent of schools. So you're going to hear from some wonderful people that have accomplished a lot. And they are going to simply come and tell you how you can make it as well. We want every last one of you to be extremely successful in life because when you're successful, the whole community is successful. When you do well, everybody else is going to do well. And so we want to produce as many people as possible in that arena that will help this community become the best it could possibly be. At this time, your superintendent of schools, who he's newly appointed superintendent as of the beginning of the school year, was a principal at one time right here at Westwood. So you are kind of like his, you know, I'm not going to say that too loud, but you're one of his favorite schools, believe you. And a lot has changed because of this superintendent already that has come in for Westwood. So would you please put your hands together before you do that. This is the way I want you, when every speaker comes in, I want you to be. Because right now you look like college students. And I see your future. I see successful people in this room. And right now you look like that every last one of you. So you continue to look like that and the speakers will leave out and talk about how what a wonderful school Westwood is when they come. So at this time, please put your hands together for your superintendent of school. We've made a lot of changes over the years at Westwood High School. How many have a laptop right now? 
okay? There's only two schools in the county, really two schools that I'm aware of in, a, in, in several counties around here. That's Westwood High School and that other school, the Jaguars. And uh, so here's what I want to do. I just want to talk to you for a couple of minutes, and I want to have everybody's eyes on me, and I want you to think about a couple of things. All right, this morning we all did something. When we woke up, we all did something the same, and some of us will do it more during the rest of the day. But when we were getting dressed this morning, and we were getting ready, and we were brushing our teeth and going through everything, everybody in here looked in the mirror. Everybody in here looked in the mirror. Some of you looked at the mirror about 10, 12, 20 times since this morning. Some of you were in the car. I saw you. I saw somebody out in the car. I was probably the senior. Uh, but anyway, so you looked in the mirror. So I have a question for you. And I want you to be very serious because nobody knows what you're thinking except yourself. When you looked in the mirror this morning, did you really pay attention to what you were looking at? You were looking at the outside, making sure I was looking good, coming in, I had to impress this person, that person. But did you look inside and what you're really made of inside? So I have a question for you. No test. But you have to do vocabulary tests all the time in all of your classes. And you have to do, you have to find the word and you have to define the word. So my question for you while I'm talking this morning for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, is my question for you is, what's the definition of you? How do you define yourself? What's really inside here? Not what everybody's looking at on the outside, but what's on the inside? So when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you really see inside? And do you see somebody inside that's strong, that can persevere, that has, has goals that are set? So let me tell you my story real quick. My mom and dad, my father never knew his dad. He never saw his father, never knew him. His mother died when he was nine years old up in Pennsylvania. So my dad raised himself with his grandmother and with his sisters and brothers and ended up in Florida. My mother. Her dad left her when she was very, very young. Her mother died when she was 12 years old. So she was on her own. So I had two parents that were on their own. And somehow they met in Miami, Miami, Florida. I was born in Miami, and when I was born, my father was a butcher. You know what a butcher is? You go to the grocery store, that's the guy in the back that's cutting the meat. Cutting up the chicken, cutting up the steaks, cutting up everything. Okay? So he was a butcher, and my mother didn't work. And I had a sister. An older sister, and then I had a young, and later on I had a younger brother. So when I was growing up in Miami, you know, we had a very modest home, very modest income, and I was into sports. And I like sports. And I still do. Except I don't like Miami Dolphins right now. You're making me upset. But anyway, so I like sports. Alright? So I used to go up to the park every day. And the main sport that I played was basketball. And many times I'd go up there by myself and just shoot and shoot and shoot, okay? Dribble, work on drills. And then my sister went to a school called Carroll City High School, Miami Carroll City High School, all right, which has a rich athletic tradition. Similar to Westwood, similar to Central, has a tradition across the, uh, the state. And so my sister went there, and you know how this is, you have an older sister, you, I, my dad would take us to the games. And so I'd get into the football games, and I'd get into the basketball games, and I decided that that's the school I wanted to go to. And I wanted to try to play basketball there because they had the best basketball program in Miami. And I wanted to challenge myself to try to be the best. So they changed the zoning, you know how you have attendance zones, and I was supposed to go to a school called Miami Central. Now a lot of you guys have heard of Miami Central because they have an outstanding football program right now. But they had a, back then, they were just an average school, and I didn't want to go to that school. I wanted to go to Carroll City. So, I took a class, Latin, anybody ever hear of Latin? It's a language, okay? So I could go to that school out of zone. And my main goal was to make the basketball team. I just wanted to make the basketball team and go to the school. I could have went to the other school, it would have been easier to make the team, but I wanted to go to the strongest place. So, long story short, back then you had, you had 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. You wasn't freshmen, you just had sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So you all could still have been in junior high school or middle school, okay? So, we go there, and we have tryouts. And the way the tryouts work is there are like almost 150, 200 guys in the gymnasium. And they line us up on a wall, and they count it down to 10, and brought 10 guys in, and you play man-to-man, -man, and if your man scored, 
if your man scored, then you were out. You have to go get back to the basket, to the end of the line. So it didn't seem like a very fair process. So the first day I'm there, my whole goal was to make the team, walk in there, get into the game. I was in the middle of the crowd, got into the game, and I was guarding some guy, and he threw up some crazy shot that went in. So I was only in there for like 20 seconds, and I was out. And I'm thinking, I've blown my chance. I am not going to make this team. Everything I've worked for all these years, I'm not going to make it. So luckily for me, they had two days of tryouts. So the next day I figured out, I'm going to be a little bit smarter. I'm going to get down to this gym first, and I'm going to be one of the first ten in the line. And then we play man to man, I'm going to pick somebody that I know I'm better than, and somebody that I'm gonna, that's not going to score on me, and I'm going to score on him, and I'm going to show these coaches what I can do. So I did that the next day, and I got on some guy, and I got on a couple guys, and I got very fortunate that I got, got to play for several minutes in the game, right? in, the, in, the, in the tryouts, okay? So that at the end of the day, the coach called out 12 players, and my name was one of the names called out, all right? And my best friend, his name was called out as well. So it was great. So we played high school basketball, we went to the state championship, won the state championship, and a shot at the buzzer. I wish I could tell you that I made that basket, but I didn't. This was before the three-point line, way back when in the day, okay? And then, won that state championship, but at the time doing all this, I was like, all right, I want to go to college. My parents had never gone to college. No one in my family had ever gone to college, and it was important for me to go to college. So I had my heart set on going to University of Florida. All right, I wanted to go to Florida, and I wanted to major in broadcast journalism. I want to be one of those guys on TV that did the sports. All right? Don't lose me. Don't let me lose you. So, I'm all pumped up, fill out all my applications, and Florida will not accept me because I scored too low on a test called an SAT. Remember that you're going to be taking this in, in a few years. All right? I was a couple of points low. I was less than five points from where I needed to be. So Florida said, in order for you to come to school here, you need to come up in the summer and go through some special program. Well, my parents didn't have any money, and I was working at a gas station, uh, pumping gas. Probably some of you don't know what that is. You don't pump your own gas now. Back in the day, we would pump gas for you. Some of the teachers may remember that. All right, so I had to keep working. So, boom, my goal to go to Florida was shot, and I, my, my guidance counselor said, well, there's a college up in North Carolina, a small college that I went to. Maybe you can go up there, and maybe you can still play basketball at a small school. So, I went to this small college called Morris Hill, North Carolina, outside of Asheville, way up in the woods, out in the sticks. And I'm from Miami, Florida, thinking I know everything, I'm a city boy. And I go up into the woods, okay, and went out, tried out for the basketball team, made the team, made what was called the traveling team, okay, and then got cut right before the season started. So I was, you know, I was a little disappointed, but I was saying, well, forget about that, I'm going to be a teacher. And I majored in social or history. Got my degree in four years, came back and started teaching. And I wanted to coach. So I coached and I taught for one year, then I went back to college to get what's called a master's degree. All right, and while I was in college, I got this ring right here that I'm wearing, which was my college ring. It, uh, the stone in there is for the month of April. And I, I'm very proud of that. That's why I wore it for you all today, is because I was the first one in my family to go to college and the first one to graduate, and very proud of that. So now my life is there, I'm a teacher, okay? My parents I had taught Sunday school, and there was something inside of me that wanted to teach. So I taught, but I wanted to coach too. So I coached, I came to Fort Pierce Central in 1980, way back in the day, all right? And I was the junior varsity boys basketball coach, and taught government and, and history and all your favorite subjects. Now, when I'm there, I'm realizing as a teacher that I want to do more with myself. I want to be an administrator. I want to be an assistant principal, and I want to be a principal. So I coached basketball at Fort Pierce Central for five years. Um, I was, I wanted to, back then, Westwood was our big, big rival. Well, those were the only two high schools here. And uh, we always had the gym would always be packed. We'd have great games. And uh, had some really good teams. And had a couple teams that weren't so good. After a few years, I became the assistant principal. First shot. First time I tried for assistant principal, I got it. And then I applied. Port St. Lucie High School was going to open. So I applied for that job to be the principal. Came in second. Okay. Came in second, didn't get the job. Another guy from Westwood by the name of Mr. Kumo got the principalship. So I went and worked for him. Two years later, you ever hear of a school called Forest Grove? How many went to Forest Grove? Most of them, okay. Forest Grove. Forest Grove just opened. So I applied for the principalship at Forest Grove and got it, all right? So I was at Forest Grove for two years. Hang with me. Two years later, the superintendent of the schools, the job I now have, comes to me and says, I'm sending you to Westwood. So I came to Westwood High School from 93 to 96, 
served here. We did some great things. We won some awards, some national awards. Really good. But inside of me, I wanted to do something else. I didn't want to just be a principal anymore. I wanted to go higher. I wanted to move up and possibly do what's called the superintendent, which is the role I'm in now. And I'm just responsible for the entire school district. I'm responsible for all the operations of the district. I'm responsible for your principals. I'm responsible to make sure that you get uh, a quality education. And I report to five school board members, of which Dr. Mills is the board chairman. So that was my goal, to be a superintendent. So I work here. I opened up St. Lucie West Middle School, went to Tallahassee for a year, and then I went to Palm Beach County. I was hired in a role called an area superintendent. Okay, and what that was, Palm Beach County has 180,000 students. We have in St. Lucie 40,000 students. We have 40 schools, they have 180 schools. So I went to Palm Beach County and I worked in North End, what was called an area superintendent. I had a, I had a uh, boundary of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach Gardens, Jupiter, and some of West Palm Beach. Many of you have been down there and seen those areas. So, from there, then in 2003, I applied for the superintendency here in St. Lucie County. All right, there were several candidates, and I made it to the finals, and I lost. I came in second. Okay, first shot at it. A little disappointed, but I was like, fine, there'll be another opportunity. A few years later, I ran for superintendent in Martin County. All right, you with me? Ran for superintendent, which was an elected position. Five people in the race. I finished second by 3%. So now, 0 for 2. All right? But I wasn't discouraged by that. I thought, you know, there'll be an opportunity. Hopefully my time will come. A few years later, I applied in Indian River County, just north of here. Guess where I came in? Second. I'm 0 for 3. If you're 0 for 3, three strikes and you're out, right? You're struck out. So, my wife and people are saying, you know what? She was like, why don't you just remain an area superintendent, remain an administrator, and why don't you forget about all this? Because there's a lot of effort that goes through trying to be a superintendent. And I remember just saying, no, you know, something will work out. So, four years ago in Palm Beach County, they get rid of their superintendent. The 11th largest district in the United States, 180,000 students. And they came over to me and they said, we want you to be the interim superintendent. What that means is you're temporary. You're just there for a while until they find who they want. And I said, fine, because I don't want to be the superintendent of Palm Beach County. It's huge. It's big. I just, you know, I'll help whoever it is that comes in. So I was interim superintendent, and a few months later they came in and said, we're going to put you into the permanent position. A job I didn't even want or ask for. All right? So I struck out three times earlier, and a lot of people were saying, you know, you're a loser. My kids will go around into the hell. Everything's in your face. You know, but it didn't deter me because there was something inside of me. There was something inside of me bigger than the circumstances that I knew there was a calling. So then from there, I served it for four years. Palm Beach County was the highest performing academic um, urban school district. We outperformed Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, Jacksonville, Orlando. We had the highest graduation rates, everything. So after four years, I decided it was time I wanted to look for something else. And fortunately, the school district and school board in St. Lucie County failed at the same thing. Overcame some hardships, some of them you know, number one, almost not making the basketball team, but, you know, being smart and trying to figure out how I could beat that system and be one of the first ten guys to make the team. Because I would have been devastated. My whole life since I was in elementary school, I wanted to make that team and to be on that team. All right? And then, being denied going to the University of Florida with my best friend at the time. He was going to Florida, I was going to be able to go to Florida. Find out just in, in May or June that you can't go and you got to go somewhere else. So, okay, regrouped, went to North Carolina to a small school. Came back, started teaching. Didn't get the first principalship I wanted, but I got the second one. All right? Didn't we opened up this, came to this school, was successful at this school, went to Palm Beach County, and three times struck out as trying to become a superintendent in this area. And then it finally worked out. Now, I asked you a question at the very beginning. When you looked in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see somebody that can overcome obstacles? Many of the obstacles and the things that you face in your life today, we never experienced. I never experienced. I see it, I saw it as a principal, I saw it as a teacher, and I saw it as a coach. But you, you guys have so many things that come your way, but you also have great, great opportunity. So my question to you is this, tonight when you go home and you look in the mirror, I want you to really define yourself. Who are you really? Do you have what it takes inside to overcome any obstacle? You ever hear of, uh, there's a President Roosevelt, there's a guy named Roosevelt, way, way back in the day, and he had a wife, and her name was Eleanor Roosevelt. 
and she made the, the following quote, no one can make you feel inferior without your own consent. Let's talk about that for just a second, I'll close. What does it mean to feel inferior? That's where you don't think much of yourself. That's where you think that you have less than others around you. And so you start to think that I don't, I'm not worthy and I don't have what it takes. But you know what? Nobody can make, you're the only one that can grant yourself permission to feel that way about yourself. Nobody else can do that to you. They can say things to you. But if you have something and you have a strong belief about yourself, and this is the whole key of my message, is what you truly believe about yourself. Do you believe that you have what it takes inside of you to overcome anything that you're going to face? Many of you have goals. Many of you want to go to college. Many of you want to go into a high paying job. Many of you have different goals. And some of you are not sure what you want to do right now. And that's fine too. As a freshman, you may not know. Seniors don't even know. When you're in college, sometimes you don't even know. But my challenge to you is when you look in the mirror, define yourself. Who am I as an individual? Do I have what it takes? Am I going to let anybody determine my path? You can't do it by yourself. That's why we have friends. That's why we have teachers. Anybody watch The Voice? Okay, anybody gonna watch The Voice tonight? Last night on The Voice, there was a girl that came on there and she said she had been bullied in high school. But she said it wasn't by the students. She said it was by her teachers. Okay? Listen to me, look at me. Let me see your eyes. All right, and she overcame that because her teachers told her that they didn't think she could amount to anything. Well, there she was last night on The Voice and somebody turned around the chair and so she's gonna be in that competition, which is gonna set her up later in life. Those same experiences can happen to you if you truly believe that you have what it takes inside. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Don't let your friends tell you. Don't let, take, don't let anyone tell you. So when you look in the mirror tonight, who do you see? I hope you see what I see with Dr. Nelson. We see kids, young men and young women, with a bright, bright future. All right? And my job is to make sure that we have everything in place for you to be successful at Westwood High School so that you can be successful when you get out of here and you move on to college or you move on to a career. All righty? So, it starts your freshman year, look in the mirror tonight, and have that honest, many of you have never done this, just have an honest discussion with yourself. Nobody else knows about it. Nobody knows what you're thinking. Some of you guys are thinking, oh, that's crazy, that's corny. Well, that's the immature crowd, but some of you are getting into it. You're going, yeah, there's something inside of you. Because each one of you has it inside of you, and don't let anybody take it away from you. Have a great freshman year. I'm glad I had the opportunity, Dr. Mills, to be the first one to speak to you. Be back visiting your classrooms. I have, uh, I have some relatives in this school. I won't tell you who they are. Um, but I have some relatives that go to school here as well. So I pay close attention to what's happening at Westwood as well as all the schools. It's great to be here. So Panthers, who do you play Friday Night Football? <laughs> that again? Don't worry about, don't worry about that. Don't worry about... I won't ask you to play football. But what I want you to do, go home tonight, Look in the mirror and ask yourself, who am I really and do I have what it takes? And nobody can take it away from you. Got it? Wow. Our first speaker of the year. And I have questions. I've been writing down notes, taking notes. Good to take notes, you know, because when you go home later on, you can look back over your notes and be inspired by what you heard earlier. It helps you remember the conversations that you hear as the different speakers come. So, what I want you to uh, begin to do when you continue to come hear the speakers, take out a piece of paper and start taking some notes. You'll be surprised at how happy you will be later on. When you go back and you start thinking, now what was some of, that, some of that stuff that I heard that made me feel really good about myself and what I can accomplish in life? So what we're going to do after each speaker speaks, if we have extra time, we're going to ask you questions. And we're going to see how much you actually um, heard and got out of the message. So before, if I don't have time, because I know where we end at about a little before 8.30, I think like 8.28, something like that, then I will not get to tell you my story today, but my story will come to you because I will be here every time a speaker comes. If I'm able to, I will be here. So I have some questions, and I know we have some teachers. Thank you so much, teachers. Um, let's give our teachers a big hand clap. Thank you.
so much for what you do. Um, and as educators, we certainly do appreciate all that you do. Ninth graders, the first question is, what school was Mr. Gent a principal at in 1993? Shout it out. Sports. Sports. Great. What was, now you have to, after you say it, you have to be quiet because I'm going right to the next question. What was, what was his, oh, let me see, what was his, his question to you that he said he wanted you to look in the mirror and do? Define yourself. Define yourself. I heard that. Ask yourself, what do you look like inside? You know, I said to a young man um, a while back, ago well, back, he, this young man, uh, we helped to raise in our program. We have an after-school program. And we helped to raise this young man from the age of 11 when he was going to Dan McCarty all the way up to young adulthood. And he left us for a while. When he returned back to say thank you, he said every time he looked in the mirror, in fact, he's a Westwood graduate. Today he works at City Hall. He'll be one of our speakers. He's, a, he's there. Uh, uh, one of the top people in the computer area over at City Hall in Fort Pierce, but he said to us, he said, thank you, I came back to say thank you, but I also wanted you to know, and he was speaking to my husband, and how many of you know Reverend Mills? Anybody out there know? Oh, I see a hand out there, okay, so you know the type of work that he does in the community, there's another hand. And he said to him, he said, every time I look in the mirror, I don't see myself, I see you. So my husband made such a tremendous impact in this young man's life that, um, and he's got a story to tell you, that he was able to go continue his education, make the right choices, and now he's back in this community, not only working at City Hall, but being a very strong community activist uh, in this community. So it's, it's, the sky's the limit. Whatever you want to do in life, you can do it. Number three, question. What was he into as a child? One word. Sports. That's what I want to hear. Good. What sport did he mostly do? Basketball. See, I knew all of you had all these answers. What class did he take in order to go to his school of choice? Latin. Latin. He, had to, he wanted to go play basketball, so he knew he had to take Latin to get in this particular school. That tells me how important your education is. A lot of you want to play sports. You want to play basketball. You want to play football in college. But you have to have a good academic record. You have to be able to do well academically to move forward in life.